In this video, we're gonna be doing something pretty cool, all the puns intended. So I got an air conditioner for the teardrop. I wanted air conditioning because it's gonna be hot. Um, the plan is to have it not in the side of the, or the camper because there's nothing worse than an air conditioner sticking out of the back of the camper. Um, so I wanted to do like a, uh, a climate right is the air conditioning unit that most people use, but it's uh, out of stock indefinitely, the website says, so they won't be making any more. So my plan was to take an air conditioner and rip the front of the cover off. And then all you have on the inside is, you know, basically the coil and then a fan. So basically air, hot air gets sucked in here and it gets blown out here. Um, so my plan is to make like a manifold out of some, some high density polyethylene plastic and then put some ports on it. These are literally camper ports, like for sewage drains. I figured this would be plenty big. It's like three and a half inches or something like that. But if I have a port here on the side and a port here on the side, I'll be able to hook up sewage hose, which I have here. New sewage hose, obviously, because I don't want no crappy air coming through. But this should be plenty enough air to cool down the camper. Um, it might not be the best flowing thing, but I figured it's readily available. It just works. The connectors are watertight, so they're going to be airtight. And I can just buy the flanges. I'll also have this exact same flange, too, on the front of the camper. So you can just pop them off whenever you want it done with them. Make it airtight again. And then that way it looks decent on the front of the camper. The only thing I am going to have to modify is I didn't want a female flange off this side of the air conditioner. Because these right here are probably going to be broken off very easily. So I'd rather have both sides of the hose with this, I don't know, male end, female end, I don't know. Both on this end and then the camper and the air conditioner both have this end. So that way there's not a way to put the pipe on backwards. And so that way the air conditioner can be a lot more smooth and streamlined. Um, there's not these giant hooks hanging off the side here. Like I said, they could break. So I also have a thousand watt inverter, sink, or, or blah, 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 pure sine wave inverter that I'm going to be putting in the camper. Um, it's a thousand watts. This only runs, I've put a, a watt meat reader on it and it runs at its hardest. It was like 450. I mean, it peaks at like 600 whenever it first starts up. But it runs at full, high, cool, uh, about 430, 450 watts or so. Somewhere in the 400s, less than 500s. My idea is to make some sort of manifold to put on the front here, about five inches out, and it'll have a chamber here that this port goes on. Then on, it'll be a chamber down here that this port goes, that'll have another port on it for the intake. The knobs, I'm just gonna leave it on full high and then I will figure out some way of turning it on and off later. But my plan with putting these on the side versus putting them on the front was I want this to be able to sit right up against the front of my toolbox so that way the air can so flow around on the back to get the hot air out, but yet this can be flood up, shut up against the front of the toolbox on the tongue, and then these can come out the side. And I have been running this without the front face on, and the way this fan spins, it already likes to blow the air this way. So I'm gonna be placing the outlet fan here versus over here, because then the, fan, the manifold will have to like turn it around just to help the air flow a lot better. So I guess the only thing to do is start cutting stuff. So let's get to that. So I have this box that's on the front of the air conditioner. I just have it sat up right now. It has the holes drilled in for the inlet and the outlet. I've still got to do some trimming and stuff. But if you can see inside of there, as you can see inside of there, I have a piece of plastic dividing the top and the bottom here. Um, it's the first piece I have in there. I haven't got anything else other than that. So that I, now that I have this box made, I, I like plastic welded it together with this hot air station. I might make a video on that. I mean, it doesn't look pretty, but it's kind of strong. Um, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to be taking this angle iron anyway and putting it over those spots to like encapsulate this whole thing in a like a cube. So that way it's a lot more strong and stuff gets held together. But yeah, let me pull it off here real quick. So if I pull it off of here, basically the inside so far 
is just this gap and this gap. And I got to put something here to block off this section. I think what I want to do is I want to come straight down so that way the side of the coil will be over here. And then I'll probably just do like a plate here because this is where the knobs are. Um, and I don't really want to like have to insulate that much around that kind of stuff. So if I just have a, a plate that goes here and just cuts it off, that way I don't have to worry about these. I'm going to do something with the electrical so I don't have to worry about these knobs. You'll see that towards the end of the video. I had to order it on Amazon. But yeah, I'm going to keep on putting stuff together and I'll catch up with you whenever I'm at next update. All right, this is probably the worst angle from the light behind it and the fact that it's completely black. But I think I have the front manifold done. I wish I would have made it a little bit bigger because these uh these flanges aren't fitting perfectly on there. So I'm gonna have to like probably notch out of here a little bit whenever so the bolts can slide in. But um I don't have it on because it's a pain in the butt, but it does go on, and as long as there's pressure, it stays on there and it makes a very nice seal around this edge. Um but if I take it off. On the inside here, you can see where the coil goes here. That would be this coil. That's your inlet air, your uh, room temperature air. It cools it and blows it out the top. Then it gets blown into here and comes out and gets blown out that way. Um, these seals, this seals extremely well right up against here. It like pushes up against this, uh, this foam really nicely. So I didn't even put anything here. But as far as here... This one right here, it kind of makes a little, like a quarter inch gap. I kind of did that by design because I didn't really want to notch around this stuff. So, to make up for that, the air conditioner came with a little bit of foam. So if I put foam in there and put like a little twist tie or something just to hold it in place, it cinches up against that real nice and it makes a good seal. You can see it through the little port to make sure everything seals right. I also put a little bit of an angle here. So... There's not a bunch of cold air flowing through here. And I'm going to put foam and stuff here to do the exact same thing as like I'm doing here. And it seals pretty nicely. These will uh, seal up a little more whenever I cinch it down. But the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this quarter inch steel. Make a box that covers up these edges here. And it has long pieces coming out. And then I'm also going to do the same thing on this. I'm going to create a metal box that goes around with the 45s and stuff to go around. And I'll put threaded holes in, in that steel. And then I can slide the front manifold over and get everything lined up. Keep it crimped down. Screw a bolt in here. There'll probably be some adjustment in it because I'm not going to be perfect with my hole drilling. But I'll be able to thread those in and tighten them down. And so that way that front will stay cinched up against the top. I guess there ain't nothing to it but to do it. So... Let's go. Alright, so it's been a minute or so since I last took a little clip. Um, just to get you caught up, we have this made. I have the bolts holding this uh, connector on, but if you remember, it was kind of like overshooting the edge a little bit. So what I did is I went ahead and notched out in the metal, like here and here, where those go in, so it kind of like will fit in there flush. Uh, I've also finished building the frame. I uh, stopped recording and built the rest of this. I also have a piece of the frame on the front of this piece. Maybe. The frame also goes around the front of here, just like on the back. And there's rib nuts in this piece. And then there's holes in this piece. So that way you can push the, uh, the front end and bolt it in. And that way it keeps it all scrammed. Uh, squished together. So the problem I was having was I didn't have a thermostat inside and didn't really want to run didn't really want to run any wires. So I got one of these outlet thermostats. I'll post a picture of it, what it looks like. Um, I already took it apart. So this was the outlet piece. It basically has a neutral and a grant and a live wire, and then you hook up your switched live wire. So your neutrals are the same, and then you basically have your power incoming. And then this is the power that goes to the air conditioner. And then whenever you have it on cool, it will turn this on whenever it gets too hot. And then it will get too cold. It will turn off. Um, this also has a safety built in. You can put a delay. So like there's a three minute delay to prevent the compressor from short cycling. Like on off, on off, on off. And that pulls a lot of power at the very, you know, start up. 
um, but if you leave it off for like a few minutes it doesn't pull as much power when it comes back on don't know why but that's the way it is so i want to wire that up first and then we're going to assemble the whole thing and we should be ready to to test it all right so i have the air conditioning running in here this air conditioning and i have cooled down this thermostat for about 70 degrees so once it gets to 72 degrees it satisfies so as you can see i've wired in careful how i touch this i've wired in the blue to the neutral leg and then i've taken the main power that comes in from the line that usually goes into the switch and i've just interrupted it so i have a a plug that plugs in there it goes in to power this device and then it goes into the the actual switch i could have removed the switch but uh i just didn't see it need need be and then there's plenty of room so i'm just going to shove it in there so i can always change it and make it run on low fan or something if i need to in the future so that's pretty nice so as you can see this is at 72 71 so it's about to turn on which it just did i don't know why but it's starting but I have that three minute delay in there. So that delay is going to wait to turn this back on for at least three minutes since it's went off. And it's been pretty close, but we'll sit here and watch it. As you can see, the light is flashing on the module to show that it is in delay mode. But we're just gonna sit here and watch it until it kicks on. It's gotta be getting close. This also lights up. All right, the delay is over. It is kicked on. The fan's running. And then that will run until I think it gets to 69. I'm not entirely sure, but I think that's about what it does. So yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and put some tape on some of these connections so that way it don't short out. And I'm gonna tuck it all in there and start to put it together. suck at low light or just the viewfinder all right well this looks better anyway the ac box is done so here we have a box it's got the plano on the front uh we have our intake air there we have our x take air exit air and we have a condenser coil on the back it gets the air in through here pushes the hot air out the back the cooled air is blue in it goes through here and it's remote controlled. The only thing I hate is that the cable is white. Um, people might say the inverter won't run it, but it only pulls like 500 watts max. So here's my inverter. So I want to plug it in. Okay, so the inverter is plugged in. It's running off of a 12 volt battery. I'm going to flip it on. It's going to boot up. So we're going to come over here, and you can tell the AC just kicked on because it's 86 degrees in here. But I'm gonna set this in here and we're gonna see if it turns off or not. It should, but you never know with these kind of things. Sometimes things work in theory, not in practice, but it should work. So yeah, AC's up and running. So at this point, I am finished and I put the hoses on and let the air conditioner run for a few hours just to make sure everything worked right. It did work. Uh, everything kicked on and kicked off when it was supposed to. But 
I just wanted to show you what it, it looked is. like with the hoses on. I haven't put the ports on the camper Look yet. I'll probably do that next year because it's already getting to the point where I don't need AC. air conditioner this year. But I just figured I'd put this video in at the end to show you what it looks like with the ports on it. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned to the next video.